Tonight on KION, the number of migrant encounters at the border have fallen since the end of COVID-era policy Title 42. Why Border Patrol says they're not sure if this trend will continue. Plus, could cruising return to the city of Salinas after a decades-long ban when city council is expected to vote on a possible repeal? And we're a little cooler out, the day, out there today in some areas. How about the work week? We'll let you know in the forecast. Also, the importance of at-home caregivers and the effort to help them educate our children. KIOA News starts now. Covering the Central Coast, this is KION News Channel 46 at 5 o'clock. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for KION News at 5. Tonight, the Secretary of Homeland Security says the number of migrant encounters at the border have fallen since the end of Title 42. Now, however, Border Patrol warns it's too early to tell if that trend will continue to stay. Christian Benavides has the latest. In Brownsville, Texas, migrants are seen waiting at this bus station. They're among the lucky who made it into the U.S. Tens of thousands of people are crowded in Mexico waiting to enter. Still, the large wave of migrants so many cities were bracing for hasn't materialized. The United States Border Patrol has experienced a 50% drop in the number of encounters versus what we were experiencing earlier in the week before Title 42 ended. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas says that number went from over 10,000 encounters to 6,300 on Friday and about 4,200 on Saturday. We have communicated very clearly a vitally important message to the individuals who are thinking of arriving at our southern border. But along border towns, holding facilities are bursting at the seams. Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez represents El Paso. In this particular facility, it's meant to house a thousand people. It's housing over 3,000. In one of these rooms, it's meant the max capacity is 90 people. There was over 400 in here. That's a 450% capacity. We, we can't allow not that bad to be the normal. Humanitarian efforts are underway to help the asylum seekers from California to New York and Colorado, where their next steps remain uncertain. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. Now, despite the decrease in numbers, the Border Patrol Deputy Chief says his agency is still preparing for daily migrant arrivals to increase between 12,000 to 14,000. And with some California rivers extremely high this year because of an immense snowpack, river rafting companies are ramping up for an epic season of excursions, but more water also means more risk. Preparations are underway for people like Tyler Soule, who is the owner of H2O Adventures, one of more than half a dozen rafting companies in Lotus. Right now, the South Fork American River is running at more than 5,000 cubic feet of water per second, which is roughly five times more than last year, making the river more dangerous. That's why Soule says it's critical to raft with professionals. This time last year, you could walk across the river. If you're choosing to go rafting with a commercial outfitter, you're choosing to go with a company that's here to provide you with a safe experience. Over the past week, the Tulare and Merced County Sheriff's Office closed off sections of rivers because of dangerous conditions, but as of now, El Dorado and Placer counties have not. All right, so I think going to our Weather 40 Center with our Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca. Welcome back. Happy to see you. Thank you. Took a couple days off. I would say it's a staycation, but actually went to Parkfield yesterday. Oh, well, nice. We got there. Okay, we went for the Bluegrass Festival. It was a nice four-day festival. We just wanted to do one day, and it was 94 degrees yesterday when we got there. Wow. So, <laughs> as you can imagine, we melted a little bit. But, you know, the rest of the evening was beautiful. This was a picture I took before we left oh. last night. And, People were still bluegrassing out there. There's some great music. Looks so serene. Good food, good drinks out there. Just love some good live music. We've been meaning to head out there for a couple of years now. Finally got it done. Uh, my wife asked for it for Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to you all out there. My wife, this is her first. To my mom, we'll throw a picture of you up on the 10 and 11 o'clock news tonight. To my grandmas, my aunts, all the other mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Hope you had a great day. Hopefully your family members treated you right. It's a little bit different today, temperature wise. Let's talk about that. We're a little bit cooler out there across the region, um, especially uh, for our inland areas. Look at this, quite a bit cooler, about 10, 15 degrees in some instances. Few areas are warmer than yesterday. And here's where we stand temperature wise. Look at Boulder Creek, 25 degrees cooler than this time yesterday. We're down to 65 this hour. Santa Cruz at 60, only 60 in Watsonville, but warmer in Monterey than on the north side of the bay. Inland area is still warm, but not quite as hot. And the reason is our 
winds are a little bit more southwesterly today. That has pushed the low clouds off to the north side of the bay. Look at those low clouds. Foggy conditions uh, from Watsonville back through Santa Cruz to Davenport. Meanwhile, the south side of the bay, nice and sunny. You might have seen some puffy cumulus clouds up over the hills. Those are out in the San Joaquin Valley. We had mentioned the potential for some thunderstorms over our inland mountains. This was, you know, before I went on my little four day break. Uh, and obviously that did not come to pass today, but this is kind of a taste of what it would have been like with some of these puffy clouds out there. I'll let you know why it didn't happen and what you can expect for the rest of the work week coming up in the full forecast in a bit. Thanks so much, Jan. After more than three decades, the city of Salinas says they will vote this week on whether or not to repeal the city's cruising ban. According to Councilwoman Carla Viviana Gonzalez, cruising is a historical asset to the Salinas Valley, adding that it comes with a proud culture the community has long preserved and advocated for. However, cruising was banned back in June of 1992 because at the time, the city cited 16 incidents of violence, drinking, and peace disturbances on private property. Advocates for cruising say it's a way for for people to showcase their culture, hard work, and art through their vehicles. City Council will vote on this issue during their meeting on Tuesday at 4 p.m. And over in Hollister, the city is looking to hear some community feedback by hosting a public outreach session to inform people about a proposed mobile food vending ordinance. Now, the ordinance will address regulations on mobile food vending within the public right of way, along with individual food trucks and trailers on private developed property. The meeting is happening on Monday, May 22nd from 6 to 7 p.m. in the city council chambers on 5th Street. Following the outreach session, city council will consider adopting the ordinance at their meeting on June 5th. In this week's Everyone's a Teacher segment, KIUN's Veronica Macias explores an effort to reach out to caregivers who are not just babysitters, but teachers at home helping with a child's early development. Take a look. These children in Gonzales have the type of care that is so common for so many families. These little ones are taken care of by their grandparents, their tias or aunts, and sometimes neighbors, unlicensed child care providers. And through the Family, Friends and Neighbors program supported by the Door to Hope organization, there's an effort to improve their experience at home and get them kinder ready by helping these informal caregivers. So to bring light to the the importance and the value that our um, license exempt child care providers have within our county. We know that most of the kids in our county are cared for by FFNs, by license exempt child care providers. Director of Family Services with Door to Hope, Claudia Gomez, says their focus is on training the FFNs and giving them the tools to provide high quality child care and education at home, teaching them how to engage with the children they're caring for and helping improve their development. We offer them weekly play groups here where they can come and um, participate with the child along with the rest of the other participants to give the kids an opportunity to socialize, to, you know, explore different areas that we have that we know support the early development of children. These FFNs say that they've noticed an improvement already. They're getting ideas through these play groups and workshops surrounding what lessons to take home and the children are getting a chance to explore around the classroom once a week with different sensory areas. I think it's a good idea to get these children together so they can interact with each other and learn how to share <laughs> and get along. When you take care of one, one child, they're not used to being around other children. Right now, there's an outreach effort in getting grandmothers and all types of FFNs educated surrounding things like even compensation if they're asking for some and explaining to them how they're essential in providing this community with valued work. We go out into the community to where the providers are, right? So we go to parks, we go to the elementary schools, uh, the grocery stores, churches, um, to make it known that we have these services available to the child care providers in our counties. The playing, reading and singing lays the ground for future literacy, whether it's in a daycare facility or at grandma's house. Very important as they say, it does take a village. Well, tonight over in the East Bay, with the clock ticking towards summer vacation, striking Oakland teachers have announced agreements on four common good issues over the weekend. Following this now eight-day strike, the teachers union says some common good agreements, such as reparations for black students, resources for unhoused students, school closures, and shared governance were reached away from the bargaining table. But with just nine days left in the school year, pressure is mounting on both sides to reach a final agreement and return students to the classroom. The district says it's hoping to have this situation settled 
settled before the first graduation ceremony on Monday, May 22nd. And as we warm up, we show you how one CAL FIRE unit is preparing for the fire response. Straight ahead, what they're doing to make sure the community stays safe. Plus, it's Asian American Pacific Islander Month. We're going to take you to a film festival over in Sacramento that's helping uplift AAPI voices and art. But right now, let's take a live look. This is our Toro Cam out here. Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca is tracking weather conditions wherever you live or wherever your mom is. Uh, he'll be back here in a couple of minutes. It's 5.08. You're watching KIA News Channel 46 at 5. Share breaking news, photos, and videos on the KION News Channel 46 app. Tar Farms is a riding stable. Roy is the manager here. I was having great difficulty walking. It was painful to see Pamela hurting like that. We've tried everything. Nothing worked. And we'd heard about the Good Feet store. Put those R supports in her boots. I can keep up with my husband when he starts moving. It's extraordinary. She's Pam. He's Roy. And that's our Good Feet story. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. At Hard Knock College, I define my future. With a flexible schedule at a location nearest to me. What's even better? For most students, tuition is free. I can attend in person, online, evenings, and even Saturdays. Whatever it is, I decide. An amazing career is within reach. Where I can do something that I love while doing something that loves me back. Register today at harnell.edu with classes in Salinas, Alisal, Castroville, Soledad, and King City. My future starts here at Hard Knock College. When our community was in danger of flooding, they were there. When our neighbors needed shelter, they welcomed them. They mobilized teams to make sure the community was protected. And even in times of danger, they answered the call. County of Monterey employees and first responders do what they do because they care. They care about you, your families, and your livelihood. For that, we offer our deepest thanks. We also thank Monterey County residents and businesses for their support. Together, we are stronger. Local is defined as belonging to a particular area or neighborhood. And while most banks offer financial solutions, Santa Cruz County Bank is your local community bank. So what does it mean to be truly local? It means reinvesting in the community, creating relationships with your clients, making decisions locally, and valuing the people who work with you. Santa Cruz County Bank. Local people. Local bank. Thanks for joining us for KMN News Channel 46 at 5. We're standing straight over to our Weather Authority Center with Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca. Well, it feels a little bit different out there after, you know, months and months of cold, rainy conditions. It's been different over the last several days, at least. And so we take a live look from Monterey right now from Domenico's on the Wharf. You can see blue skies and a pretty nice night out there. So if you're heading out for supper, maybe with mom, south side of the bay, sunny, north side of the bay, it's going to be a little cloudy tonight, uh, maybe a little foggy out there, so be careful. Santa Cruz, Capitola, a lot of great places to eat. Santa Cruz Mountains, you might get a little of that fog happening as well. Temperatures around the bay sliding into the mid-50s overnight, still fairly comfortable, not near as cold as it's been um, as this warmer air mass remains in place across there. But, you know, if you're in the fog, in the low clouds, it does feel a little chilly, so something to keep in mind. Look at the bigger picture right now, big area of low pressure. This is what looked like would be a little bit farther south and west based on the computer models this time last week. So if you were watching the newscast last Sunday night, we were talking about some thunderstorm potential. And sure, there are thunderstorms everywhere across the Great Basin, uh, up into even portions of the Rockies to some extent, the northern Sierra, just not quite west enough. So we're still dry here. However, that lows influence the uh, cooler air aloft associated with it is what cooled us down today really across the region. So that's why our inland areas were quite a bit cooler. But as we look at our long term planner, the low kind of gets back absorbed into the flow. The ridge re solidifies here across the west coast. And for the next couple of days, our inland highs are going to be back probably touching the 90s again like we've seen over the last couple of days. So just a momentary cool down on the on the inland side of things. On the coast, we're going to remain in onshore flow, so that's going to keep temperatures seasonable uh, and keep some low clouds in the forecast even as we head into next weekend. So no major change. Again, just a little bit more of a warm up on the inland side of things and the coast stays about the same, maybe just a touch warmer here over the next couple of days. So as far as those low clouds are concerned, uh, late tonight, the model probably going a little fast with the coverage, but we will eventually see the low clouds circulate back around the bay 
from north to south this time and then push into our inland valleys with some patchy fog possible once again. It was a little dense um, late last night and early this morning, and that is potential again tomorrow morning. So watch out for areas of reduced visibility. Give yourself a little extra distance between you and the vehicle in front of you to make sure you can get your destination safely. Now during the afternoon tomorrow, we'll have fairly light surface winds, but I think we'll see low clouds kind of hanging on the north side of the bay at first, and then it'll be a little more directed toward the east side of the bay as we'll have a little bit more of a westerly flow. So the flow isn't the same as it is today. So Santa Cruz, the chance of you been being completely socked in in fog all day tomorrow is a lot lower than it was today. So you'll see some sunshine tomorrow. Monterey will see some sunshine as well, but eventually the clouds will looks like push back in tomorrow. Uh, and then Salinas as well, you'll get some sunshine as well during the afternoon. And eventually it will return the clouds wise will. Uh, temperatures tomorrow a little bit warmer than today, but still cool in Santa Cruz. 65, 63 in Capitolo. Highs again, we're down into the 60s in places like Boulder Creek today after being in the 80s yesterday. So we're going to go halfway the distance and get you back into the mid 70s tomorrow. Scotts Valley in the 70s over the top of the hill there. Patch and Pass 78 degrees up on the summit on the east shore of the bay expecting highs to stay in the 60s. Even Salinas in the 60s tomorrow, but we'll find 70s over the hill in the San Juan and may touch 80 if you head up to Morgan Hill tomorrow as our upper levels are going to start warming back up again. Over to the Monterey Peninsula, temperatures uh, tickling the low to mid 60s, so pretty seasonable, maybe still a little cool for this time of year. And then farther south, we will see highs returning to the 90s in our far southern valleys, as you can see, Bradley, Parkfield. King City, 80 degrees, looking pretty nice for you as well. So a little bit warmer after today's cool down. Over the next seven days on the coast, we'll have some ups and downs, but generally pretty seasonable weather. Uh, we'll see our daily cycle of low clouds day to day, and some days will be sunnier than others, but uh, it'll feel like late May, early June for this time of year. Inland areas, we'll see highs above normal as the ridge kind of strengthens here over the next couple of days. There may be some cooling as we head into next weekend, but right now, besides any drizzle, we squeeze out of the low clouds. There's no rain in the forecast for the next seven days. All right, sunny weather ahead. Thank you so much, Dan. And we know the fire season has been year round in California, and now with the weather heating up, Cal Fire BU is busy training. KON's Calissa Silva shows us how they're training to keep you safe. The skills you're seeing demonstrated today behind us is what we consider VEIS, or Vent, Enter, Isolate, Search. It's a quick, down and dirty, but very efficient and thorough search pattern. Learning a bunch of new skills, new stuff that I haven't really done prior to this a uh, lot. These firefighters that are with us today are advancing their knowledge, skills, and abilities in order to cross-train from the engine over to the truck. They come up to the structure, they identify the needs to go into a search pattern, find that fire room where we potentially have victims, and they make entry, whether it's through the doorway or a window. They'll quick do a, sw a sweep of the floor to make sure there's no victims there. They sound the floor to make sure they have good ground to get in on. Then they enter into that structure. It's been a lot of hard work, but we're learning a lot. Um, some techniques that are a little bit more advanced than we're used to working on an engine company. The real benefit of all this to the community is uh, honing our skills and allowing these firefighters to understand uh, how we work in conjunction with our local cooperators here. We do run a lot of mutual aid request calls as a truck company into Salinas, Monterey City, Presidio of Monterey, and Seaside. So uh, just allowing these folks to see really uh, what we do as true truck company operations is essential in our everyday operations here in the unit. And a heads up for drivers now as we get switch over to uh, traffic concerns. This is Santa Cruz County. Construction continues this week on Highway 1. Crews say they're going to be working between 41st Avenue and Soquel Drive to construct a new bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing at Chanticleer Avenue. Overnight closures are going to be in place going both directions on the highway Wednesday, May 17th and Thursday, May 18th. Northbound closures are going to be between 9 at night until 5 a.m. Southbound closures, it's going to be between 9 p.m. until 6 in the morning. Over in Monterey County, Public Works says road work in Carmel Valley that was meant to start tomorrow. It's actually being postponed until next week. This is going to happen on the intersection of Rio Road and Via Nona Marie in Carmel Valley. Once the project begins, it will take roughly a week to finish from Monday. And people took to the red carpet on Saturday for the 7th annual Sacramento Asian Pacific Film Festival. Attendees viewed unique cultural stories on the big screen while supporting AAPI filmmakers in the process. 
Film Festival reveals the raw stories of various groups in this underrepresented community and uses the magic of filmmaking to share the stories that have often gone untold. The first screening, Children of the Mist, did just that as it tackled the controversial tradition of bride kidnapping. Organizers say they hope these films now not only spark emotion, but also conversation. It's really when they come out of that experience and they connect with each other uh, on a very authentic and real level and they have these side conversations and they get to know each other a little bit better. We want to uplift the diversity of stories from the immigrant experience to the refugee experience to someone who may have been here five, six generations. And Hong dancers also showcase their tradition, setting the stage for a number of other cultural performances throughout the weekend, as the event uplifts AAPI voices and art and its opportunity to invoke more understanding within and beyond the community. That's awesome. Anything in general on a stage, in a theater, I'm all about, especially when it comes to trying to stay cool. A lot of folks have been outdoors recently for baseball playoffs, not MLB, though. Yeah, and it was pretty cool out there. The fog uh, rolled in. It was a pretty crazy day yesterday. Check out that. Oh, that's Cool. Right there, it's a cool one. We got the highlights coming up. This is how legends 2024 Chevy Silverado HD with Duramax Diesel and the Chevy Silverado with powerful Turbomax engine. No matter what route you take, there's a Chevy truck to get you there. Find new roads. Thank you for making Chevy Silverado the number one selling full-size pickup in California. Get 5250 total value on this Silverado when you trade in an eligible vehicle. See your local Chevy dealer today. This may sound strange, but you've been here before. You were here when this wrench was turned, and when this line was drawn, oh, and when this stitch was sewn. You inspired the Lexus ES to be, well, more you. So thank you. We hope you like your work. Get 4.99% APR financing on the 2023 ES350. Teachers have the power to mold our communities. At Community Bridges, our early education division teachers have been positively impacting Santa Cruz County youth since 1986. With low teacher to child ratios, dynamic and inclusive curriculum, competitive pay, and a robust benefits package, our early education division programs create an environment where educators and students can thrive. The first five years of a child's life are critical to their health and success. Help mold the future. Visit communitybridges.org today. At California Closets, every project is a personalized experience. Custom designed, built, and installed by true craftsmen. We create exactly what you want, so your guests never realize they're sleeping in your office. And laundry stops feeling like a chore. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Start your experience with a free design consultation. The Otters are conference champions for the first time in program history. Cal State Monterey Bay won the CC 2A tournament, and they did so in dramatic fashion. How about those Otters? Championship Saturday out in Seaside, bringing with it quite a few surprises, resulting in just a wild day of baseball. We already talked game one. Let's talk game two now. Down eight. Things aren't looking too bright, but here come the Otters. With the title on the line, they mount a massive comeback. A big sixth inning here for Monterey Bay. Cole Murchison, he stays hot. How about another RBI double to bring the Otters within two? You can feel the momentum start to change. It's all leading up to this top of the seventh. J.J. Engman calls game. Here's the dugout reaction. A high drive deep to left field, and that ball's out of there in a hurry. The Otters take the lead and would never surrender it, thanks in part to this guy right here, Ryan Sleeman. Six and a third innings pitched. Six strikeouts, only one earned run. Have a game, Ryan Sleeman. Just like that, the Otters, they're going home with some hardware. Again, for the first First time in program history, Monterey Bay went the CC 2A tournament. Final score, Otters 13, Coyotes 9.
nice day in Monterey as IMSA thunders through Laguna Seca. Here's a look at some of the sights and sounds. And after a brief fog delay earlier this morning, it's a beautiful day for some sports car racing out at the Modal Course de Monterey. 38 cars, four classes, four winners. That racing action ending not too long ago. We will have your highlights later on tonight at 10 and 11. But checking in on their neighbors, Monterey Bay FC, the organization as a whole, split the day. MBFC 1 on the road, MBFC 2 at home home. Let's take a look at the results from that exciting night. You got New Mexico United on the road against, or Monterey Bay on the road against New Mexico United, I should say. Adrian Rebelar does find the back of the net. That makes it 2-1, but Union, they just come up just short. NMU winning that one 2-1. to one. But how about Monterey Bay 2? Five goals. They send Marin FC packing and BFC 2 remaining undefeated. And it was an action-packed weekend in sports. We can't forget about Salinas' own Ruben Villa. He returned to the ring Saturday in Stockton, first time in over a year. And his first fight under his new contract with top rank went pretty well. Up against Villagrana, Ruben got his second straight win with a big fifth-round stoppage. Villa dropped Villagrana in round 4-2, giving his loyal fans something to cheer about. Improves to 20-1 and one overall, making Salinas proud. This portion of KION is brought to you by Hartnell College. This is ready to go online. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick survey. Who wants their internet to work pretty much everywhere? Because we're busy women. We don't have time for a lag or buffer right? Get internet on the Xfinity 10G network for just $25 a month for two years with Wi-Fi equipment included. And it needs to run smooth, like super, 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 super smooth. Hey, should you be drinking that? It's decaf. The next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. The future starts now. For all of your improvement projects, make sure you have a plan and trust a local licensed professional. You'll be glad you did. Sponsored by Kastner Exterminating, Pest Control Expert, Associated Services Heating, Solar and Air, and Wilson's Plumbing and Heating, Expert Plumbing Services. When our community was in danger of flooding, they were there. When our neighbors needed shelter, they welcomed them. They mobilized teams to make sure the community was protected. And even in times of danger, they answered the call. County of Monterey employees and first responders do what they do because they care. They care about you, your families, and your livelihood. For that, we offer our deepest thanks. We also thank Monterey County residents and businesses for their support. Together, we are stronger. Life is uncertain. Everyday pressures can feel overwhelming. It's okay to feel stressed, anxious, worried, or frustrated. It's normal. With CalHOPE's free and secure mental health resources, it's easy to get the help you and your loved ones need when you need it the most. Call our warm line at 833-317-4673 or live chat at calhope.org today. KION means breaking news first. So we begin tonight with an investigative story you will only see here on KION first. Exclusive coverage. KION News Channel 46. Breaking news first. Fire breaks out at an apartment in Monterey, and KION News Channel 46 is first on the scene. But first, we do have breaking news tonight. Whenever news breaks, firefighters responded to the scene. KION News, breaking news first. Finally tonight, happy Mother's Day to all the moms here on the Central Coast. We have a guest here to celebrate with us today, Jeronica. Yes, this special lady right here is my mother, Akila Ferranti. <laughs> Fun fact for everyone, my mom has five kids and I'm the only girl, so you can imagine, crazy household, but I was the princess and it's okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna tell you, mom, thank you for everything you've done for my brothers and I and everything that you do for our family. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there on the Central Coast. Um, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day and the great weather that we're having. Absolutely. Are you the youngest, by the way? Youngest I am. Of five? Oh, youngest same. Of five. Youngest of five. Bullied yeah. forever. So. Same. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One of the bigger bullies here, Dan Sianka. Hi, Dan. Hey, who's calling who? I'm not a bully. No, I, my sister probably, but my, I have a younger I'm sure she would have said I was a bully. No. Happy Mother's Day to my mom out there as well. Um, and to all you moms out there, 
It's a great day. It's oh, nice absolutely. For us. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. We do have a, a final <laughs> look at weather. I think we've got a picture of the day to share with you. This one uh, coming in from southern Monterey County. This was last week when we had some thunderstorms in Fresno County. Some of the clouds were spilling over into southeastern Monterey County. So this picture taken from Upper Ranchita Canyon, sent in by Kathy. Uh, so here's your forecast, Kathy, up there on the Olive Orchard tomorrow. Mm. Nice and hot, 89 and mostly sunny. Thanks for the great photo. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. And thanks to all the moms out there for uh, raising all us hooligans that ended up on the news now. And thank you all for watching at home. Thank you so much. We'll see you tonight at 10 on Central Coast CW and 11 on KIY. Happy Mother's Day.